Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last lecture of EC 2026, Introduction to Signal Processing, we talked about sinusoids, particularly how to plot a sinusoid based on its formula. In this lecture, we'll go the other way and talk about how to find the formula of a sinusoid from its plot. Remember in this class, we prefer to represent sinusoids using their cosine representation instead of their sine representation. And we're specifying sinusoids in terms of an amplitude A, which is a positive number, a frequency omega in radians per second, and we can relate that to the frequency in hertz by multiplying the frequency in hertz by 2 pi. And the period of the signal is going to be 1 over f, or equivalently 2 pi over omega. Briefly reviewing the example from last time, we could plot the sinusoid by first figuring out the period. And then to figure out where one of the peaks is located, we could take the argument of the cosine and set that equal to 0. So if we do that here, we wind up with a peak at t equal minus 4. We could then locate that peak on the graph here, and then we could find another peak that's a period away, which here is 20 divided by 3 away. And then we can march along and the next 0, and then the valley, and then the next 0, and then back up to the peak. Each of those has a spacing of a quarter of a period. And then we can just connect the dots and periodically extend it outside of that range. Time shifting is an idea we can apply to signals in general. You just replace the t in the formula with t minus tm, where tm is the amount of the shift. If we apply this to a cosine, we can apply the shift like this. And when you shift a function, whatever is happening at t equals 0 moves to tm because you can imagine plugging tm here for t, and these things would zero out. Now the peak of the original cosine was at zero, so that peak has now moved to tm. Now, the red line here is plotting this function, this 5 cosine 0 0.3 pi t, and it has a peak at zero. If we take this function and we shift it by negative 4, the function scooshes over this direction. Well, I have t minus minus 4, so I can rewrite that as t plus 4. So if you see t plus a number in an argument, it's like moving the function to the left. If you see minus a number, it's like moving it to the right. So for sinusoids, a time shift corresponds to a change of phase. If I were to look at these two expressions here, one in terms of this time shift and one in terms of the phase, and just equate the expressions, I wind up with minus omega tm equals phi. And I could arrange this and write it in terms of the time shift as minus phi divided by omega. So let's talk about deriving the formula of a sinusoid from a plot. You want to measure the period of the plot. And when we say period, we usually mean fundamental period, so the smallest possible period. Obviously, if a function is periodic with period t, it's also periodic with period 2t and 3t, et etc. et cetera. So you can measure the period between two successive peaks or two successive volleys or two zero crossings, but you have to remember to skip a zero crossing. And then you can compute the frequency and radians from this formula of 2 pi divided by t. Then you could measure the time of one of the peaks and then compute the phase using this formula phi equals minus omega times tm. And usually what you want to do is you want to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi as needed in order to get phi to be between minus pi and pi. That's a convention we like to use. Now, the easiest part is you just measure the height of the wave, and that gives you your amplitude A. So let's look at an example of applying these three steps. Here we have a plot, and it's relatively easy to measure the period here. It's pretty easy to see that each of these peaks is the same distance from the grid lines. So the period here is just 0.01 seconds, or equivalently 1 over 100. Now, measuring the peak here is a little bit trickier. 
if we sort of eyeball halfway here and then pick half of that, and then this might be somewhere around half of that. So I'm going to say the peak is at minus 1 over 8. Actually, I need to multiply that by my grid spacing here. So that's 0.01. So we'll say that the peak is at minus 0.00125 seconds. Now, technically, I could have chosen this peak, or I could have chosen this peak, or I could have chosen this peak. But if we pick the peak that's closest to the origin here, then I'll naturally wind up with a phase, a phi, that's between minus pi and pi, which is the convention we like to use. So I'm going to pick that one. That avoids me having to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi later. From the period, I can compute the frequency in radians per second, specified by omega, as 2 pi divided by t. So that's 2 pi divided by 0.01, which gives me 200 pi. And then I can compute the phase using this formula, minus omega tm, and that's going to give me minus 200 pi, because that's my omega. And then if I take my tm of minus 0 0.00125 seconds and plug that into here, that will give me 0.25 pi. So that gives me my omega and my phi. And the easiest thing to find is the amplitude A, which I can just read off the graph here as 5. If you want some practice with this, the DSP First Toolbox has a sign drill GUI that will create random sinusoids and put them on the screen, and then you could try to figure out the parameters, and then try out your guess, and then it will plot the sinusoid according to your parameters so you can see how close you were. One thing to note here is that the frequency in the GUI is specified in terms of hertz and not radians per second. We talked a little bit about this in the last lecture, but just to emphasize, you can always add or subtract any integer multiple of 2 pi within the argument of a cosine. So the cosine is periodic with period 2 pi. So if we think about what that means in terms of a time shift, I could imagine taking this expression here and rewriting this as thus so that when you multiply this omega through, I wind up with the omega t here, but then the omegas cancel here and here when I come up with this 2 pi. And this 2 pi over omega, well, that's just my capital T, my period. So a phase of 2 pi corresponds to a time shift of a period t, so that addition of 2 pi doesn't change anything. So going back to the earlier example, it was presented in terms of a phase of 1.2, but we really want to represent our phases as being between minus pi and pi, so we'll prefer this minus 0.8. And that would correspond with this peak here, which is closer to the origin than this minus 4 that we got from the 1.2 pi. So when we think about all of the places where our cosine function winds up reaching a peak, when we're trying to find the formula associated with a particular plot, when you think about all of the peaks to choose from, you generally want to pick the peak that's closest to the origin. That will give you a phi between minus pi and pi. And in this particular example, it gives you that phi of minus 0.8 pi. As a little bit of a preview of the upcoming lecture, we're going to represent sinusoids using complex exponentials. So complex numbers are going to show up. Now, this may seem a little weird. We have these nice, ordinary, real-valued sinusoids. Why would we want to make things literally more complex? Well, it turns out by using complex numbers, we can avoid a lot of tricky trigonometric computations. We can do some equivalent algebraic calculations that are a lot easier. But we'll talk about that next time.